Hello all, I am Haku, and this is chapter 5 in Ninja Gaiden Sigma Plus on Very Hard. In this chapter you are playing as Rachel, and there are a couple things that you need to notice about Rachel in comparison to Ryu. She is using the Warhammer. The Warhammer is a slow weapon. It is comparable to the Dabalahro and the Unlabeled Flawlessness and the Dark Dragon Blade. So for that reason, all of the weapon animation movements are fairly slow. Her counterattack is still very effective, but it does take a significant portion of time to actually land a successful hit with most moves. This is important because Rachel herself is very slow in comparison to Ryu. Something to do right at the start of the chapter, when you kill off the first three soldiers, leave the essence there, move into the next area, and if you do a roll jump and land properly between the two mobs, you can take them out with an ultimate technique and then just do a jump power technique to finish the flying mechanical creature. If you do it perfectly, you should be able to get the time karma bonus, even though it is six seconds. My roll jump, unfortunately, was mistimed and I tried to charge the karma before I could. Here, if you pop directly to the right, charge after killing off the first white soldier you can use the essence that's dropped in order to take out the dark colored soldier then chain that essence into the rocket launcher soldier very easy and quick time karma bonus there roll up into the next area in order to get the dorku monastery key here you can do a jump power technique right as you enter the area in order to take out the first mob then from here, you should be able to take out the second mob and the third mob very easily without any difficulty. However, my jump power technique missed the third mob because it was charging me. Unfortunately, the time karma bonus there was missed, but it should be very easy for you to get as long as you just jump power technique right as you enter the area. She is a powerhouse in comparison to Ryu, especially this eight stage in the game. All of her techniques are incredibly damage dealing. Here we face a miniature fiend challenge. In order to get the time karma bonus here, generally you have to successfully land a counter attack on multiple fiends at once and then use a standard square technique into a triangle finish. This will allow you to deal the heaviest amount of damage to the fiends and hopefully begin your UT combo. Wait until there are all of the fiends active and present on the screen before you start charging your ult. You want to try to hit two or three if possible every single UT. If the fiends are in the ground, generally you can bait them out by rolling directly towards their shadows that are coming towards you, and then once the shadows are coming towards you in your roll, immediately jump out of it. It will bait them out of the shadow, and after they are baited out of the shadow, the ultimate technique should be able to quickly finish them off. Here, because their shadows are so variable, it unfortunately I was unable to get the time karma bonus here. However, if the fiends play nicely and don't spend most of their time just chilling out in the ground, unable to be hit, you should be able to get it. The same idea goes here, if you can land a standing square combo into a triangle finish, then you can start the UT chain. All the same rules apply that were going on in the first batch of fiends that you were encountering. It generally is fairly difficult to successfully hit multiple fiends with a UT, and there you can see if one of the fiends manages to hit you, with their shadow technique, and then another fiend, fiend immediately begins to combo you, it is actually fairly difficult to successfully avoid the damage. The shadow technique will block break you, and then the normal combo will do a pretty heavy amount of damage. Her ultimate techniques are in a forward cone, and have a slight 360 degree radius around them. The 360 degree radius is fairly small, so you almost have to land directly on top of whatever mob that you're fighting in order for it to successfully go off. It is very unnecessary to buy any healing items in this chapter. 
generally what you can do because there is a fiend challenge coming up if you want to be set on essence with Rachel by the armlet that increases yellow essence absorption and that will allow you to basically max out your essence with Rachel because she has basically a fiend challenge in every chapter that she is present in and her ultimate techniques which is basically all you should be using in the fiend challenge should be enough to either one shot the mob or in the case of the dinos that come later two or three shot the mobs and the earrings of power shouldn't make much of a difference and by earrings of power I mean earrings of the sun her earrings all have the same functions as reuse armlets they are named the same, do the same things. It's kind of interesting that they gave her a kick and throw increase of power earring because, well, her kicks are very weak and her throws are not much better. Here we have Rachel's first fiend challenge. You're going to be facing 100 of these particular lower class fiends. It is incredibly easy to just chain ultimate techniques on them for an extended period of time. The chain really shouldn't ever end because you're in such an, a small enclosed area. Just be mindful of the walls, be mindful of how you are rolling out of the area. If you roll directly towards one of the fiends, Rachel will do her flip over technique where she basically just flips over the fiends and then has an actual period of time where she is vulnerable to damage. So that is something that you want to be very careful of. If you flip over a fiend on accident, there's a high chance that a fiend will be comboing you directly after, which basically means you're going to take damage. And damage is really unnecessary here. You shouldn't really be getting hit at all. Also, be very mindful of the walls. If you hit into the walls, she just sort of bounces off and then lands. And whenever she bounces off and lands, seems like she has a tendency to land immediately where fiends are because the fiends tend to be chasing you. All of the rules that were mentioned before with ultimate techniques with these fiends still apply. Don't charge until all of the fiends are active and present in the area. Try to hit at least two fiends with every single UT and this chapter is incredibly easy to get through in a short amount of time coupled with that because it has a fiend challenge in it, you are guaranteed to get the Legendary Hunter title if you finish. You can see that Rachel is just great at taking out these fiends. It's very easy to avoid them, avoid their techniques, and just chain ultimates on them. Something that I want to bring up that I think that some of you may find of interest is the idea of mirror neurons, and that is, if you are watching something, or perceiving something, or even just hearing something, the, the example that has been used is that if you are just listening to a Grandmaster Pianist, the same neurological pathways that are firing in that Grandmaster Pianist are also firing in you. So, this brings up a couple of interesting ideas. You know, if a neurological pathway in your brain just fires once, that doesn't necessarily mean that that pathway is going to take root. And if you compare the brain wavelengths, it's not exact, it's not perfect, it's very close. But obviously, someone like a Grandmaster Pianist has had a lot of time in order to perfect those particular neurological pathways. So. It's close, but it's not perfect. But there are a couple things that I want you to think about, you know, in your own empiri empirical experiences. Have you ever noticed that once you watch someone do something, that it's much easier for you to do? Especially if it relates to proprioception or any sort of kinesthetic movement. So, not only does, does this apply to things like any sort or form of physical task, but in a lot of ways it applies to gaming as well. And that is why I think that the idea of streaming games or the idea of watching other gamers is so 
popular. It gives you a lot of ideas and a lot of structure that you may not have individually thought of yourselves. And I think that's why the idea of community is so important, too. If you are unable to do something in a particular area, it doesn't necessarily mean that someone else can't. So, I'm sure I'll talk more about this idea in other Fiend Challenge videos, because there is a lot that goes into it, and <clears throat> there's a lot that makes it a very interesting subject to look at, an interesting subject to study. So, by completing this Fiend Challenge, we get a new hairstyle for Rachel. You can see it there, looks great. Go ahead and skip the bats, they're a waste of time. Roll your way into the monastery. You have two more groups of creatures in this chapter. The next group of creatures is are more of the fiends. Also, there are more spirit elect elixirs in here, so don't worry about spending your essence on it. I mean, there really isn't anything to buy with her essence other than earrings, and once you've maxed out the earrings, it's kind of like, well, what's the point? Again, try to either get a counterattack off, or get a standard standing triangle combo into, well, I mean, square combo into a triangle finish. Once you have a single essence active in the area, start chaining those ults. It takes a while for these creatures to spawn, well, first despawn and then respawn. So that is why the time feels so difficult to hit with these particular mob spawns. Yeah. It's interesting because you'd think that once the mobs are down and just out, they would despawn quicker, and then they would respawn quicker. But there's that slight time delay, so, you know, every time you kill a particular one of these fiends, you always have to wait about 0.25 of a second for the mob to despawn, and then another 0.25 of a second for the mob to spawn and become active in the area. It just eats away at that karma timer. I really think that the developers don't fully expect people to get all of the timer challenges, especially since I saw a video of basically a flawless Master Ninja Doku kill. I mean, I cannot even imagine how someone could do it better, and they still were off of the time limit. In this room, instead of facing Black Spider Ninja like you did in Hard, you're now facing the Flame Spider Ninja. Basically, <clears throat> use walls. Walls are your friends. With the walls, go ahead and use any jump techniques that you can in order to both gain iframes and to deal damage. Once you take out one of the ninja, you can just chain ults, and it's very easy to take out the rest. There we see the portraits, portraits of Ishtaros and Nike. Head up there, hit up the portraits, and that ends the chapter. From the Fiend Challenge, and basically being able to chain ults the entire chapter long, it should be easy to break at least 400k karma. 450k karma shouldn't be too difficult either. I wouldn't be surprised if some people have broken 500k karma by really perfecting this chapter, but who knows. There you can see, clear time of 13 minutes. Enough kills to get the full kill score necessary, and the full essence score. It's just finishing the Fiend Challenge will net you net Legendary Hunter, but anything on top of that is just grand. Thanks for watching everyone, I appreciate it.